put on the cloud. Okay, hi everyone. This is Ron McKinney with Parada uh, Photo. Uh, we're here to talk about our uh, 2022 conference. It's going to be February 24th to 27th at uh, at Austin. And uh, so far, we have Lois Greenfield here with us, along with Jonathan Givens, to talk a little bit about it. And um, we are supposed to be also having uh, David Hoffman and possibly Oliver Endall joining us as well. Um, so we'll just see how that works. I know that that uh, David might be joining us by phone, so he might not be able to uh, um, um, join us on video. I'm not sure. Um, I'm going to be watching the chat channel for questions. Uh, be sure you change the default. So when you send a chat, it goes to everyone. It, the default is that it just goes to the panelists. Um, but I'd like everyone to see your questions. And what I'm going to try and do, if I can, is uh, get you guys on here if you guys have a question so you know we can hear you talk. Um, but we're starting to get uh, you know to the part where we understand um, uh, where we are with the uh, conference now, and um, so I just want to talk to you a little bit about it. So uh, we're going to be starting on Thursday, and um, we we had been planning to do an excursion to McKinney Falls State Park on Saturday, but. It actually works out better for us to do it on Thursday. So we're gonna be doing it on Thursday, leaving, um, I think the first bus is gonna leave at 3.30 to go there. And, um, and we're gonna take a, probably two or three buses. We're gonna have a limited number of people who can go. Um, so you may, if you're not registered, you might wanna get registered so you can sign up for that excursion and, uh, and, um, and be a part of that. Um, you know, on that same day, we still will be doing photo walks, you know, they're on site. So if you're unable to go to the excursion, um, you can still be doing a photo walk there. And, um, and then uh, Eric Parry and Kim Henry will be doing a light painting demo and we'll be following up with our welcome reception at 8 p.m. And we're going to be, um, uh, also announcing the photo comp winners at the welcome reception. So I'm, I'm really excited about that. Um, you, you know, my, my, I, I'm going to like, just like, uh, like answer some questions as they pop up into the chat. Uh, and then if somebody has like, a, especially if somebody says, hey, I want to get on there, you know, um, yeah, we have a couple people from St. Paul. That's kind of cool. Um, um, but I, I'm going to let you guys come up on here and talk if you'd like. Okay, um, so let me, uh, let me start by answering Rick Fry's question, which is about how to sign up for the dancer shoots. And um, um, we haven't set that up yet because we just finished doing the acceptance with all the dancers. So, you know, we have roughly around 80 dancers or so who have uh, confirmed that they're going to be coming or our, the quality of the dancers is just amazing. We're going to be having, you know, some who were here, you know, the first time and then a lot of new people as well. So we're pretty excited about that. So we should have the app up uh, for you to sign up for dancer shoots, you know, hopefully by December 1st, because our plan this year is that if anybody wants to um, get a, a dancer, um, uh, you know, have a dancer that you want to check out, we want to do it in advance this year. You know, we're not going to have you just walk in and pick somebody, you know, up and, and, and go for a walk because, you know, we just, you know, we set aside too many dancers for doing that. And sometimes we had too many dancers there. Sometimes we had too few. And so we think that like signing up for it ahead of time is a really good idea. Um, I hope that everybody who is registered, you know, has the app so you can kind of like see the entire schedule. Um, one of the things that we're putting together right now is our schedule. So you guys will be able to see, you know, who's speaking and what the classes are um, and uh, start, you know, like working out your own schedule. And with that app, you can actually create your own schedule. So you know where you're going from one, one hour to the next. So uh, I, I, I'd like to like just start off by uh, introducing uh, we'll start with Lois, our keynote speaker for 
uh, for the conference this year. And, uh, you know, she's joining us for the first time. We have Jonathan Givens here. He was here at our last conference. He's going to be back as a speaker and he's going to be heading up our aerial photography. So we're going to be hearing about that from him. Uh, but let's start with Lois. Uh, <clears throat> Lois, uh, what would you like to, uh, you know, tell us about, you know, what, what, what your, you know, expectations are? I mean, I know this is your first time with us, but, uh, yeah. you know, can you tell us a little bit about your classes and, and about your keynote, maybe? Yeah, okay. Well, um, I have a few keynotes, I think, in process. Um, one is kind of what has inspired me. So, um, because, you know, as a dance photographer, well, I didn't really come from the dance world. I actually wanted to be a photojournalist or something like that. But when I got into this, um, I was also uh, studying in, in a short term in Italy in, in college. And I was really blown away by Michelangelo and Bernini and all these people. And it actually, inspired you know not literally inspired me like oh gee i'd like to take photographs like this because it wasn't until years later that i actually entered dance photography and then i found myself kind of drawn to to those things so i, I you know I, I can't even explain why but and now to go the other route is you know not being from the dance world i was not really that interested and I'm still not interested in posing and choreography and stuff like that. So for me, it was just about working. Well, my work bifurcated in, in two directions. One was literally photographing all the dance companies all over the world and, and replicating their choreography you know, for the camera. And the other side is the... Um, just inspiration of working with dancers without choreography. So people from the most famous dance companies or all around the world, whatever. And I wanted them to just do, I wanted them to express themselves outside the confines of choreography, which I think was pretty unusual at the time um, because dancers are told they have to like perform everything perfectly in this. And just by chance, they now could do anything they wanted, any way they wanted to do it. And I set up a special lighting for that, and um, which we'll discuss, I'll discuss all my lighting and all my little tricks and everything, which aren't really tricks, it's just how I do it, how I've always done it, how I always will do it. Um, but a lot of it is the communication with the dancer. And I find that uh, when I give workshops and, and things like that, uh, the photographers on whatever level they are beginners or, or really don't really feel comfortable talking to the dancers and they don't ask like I, I don't ever tell a dancer what to do unless this is a dance company and I have to you know do the choreography whatever I want them to be themselves so it gives them I think I just said this but I, I want them to express themselves and that's amazing for me because I don't walk in with any game plan but then it does become a collaboration. Um, and of course, you know, I bring them over to see what they're doing and it's, it's integral. It's not like the old days, you know, in the seventies when you take the picture and you don't really see the result until you process it in the dark room. So now everything is immediate and the dancers can come over and see, see what they did and they can, you know, grow from that. And then I can grow from that or shrink from that. And I also uh, have used a lot of props, not like proppy props, but throwing things in because I like this cosmic, whatever it is. I would go, my, my studio at the time was on the east side in the 20s and in the 20s, and I would go pick up all kinds of crazy stuff um, nearby. And I would just put this panoply of things that they could play with. And you could easily see these things, by the way, I'm not trying to send people to my website or anything, but the, the one-to-one -one series, which is what I call it, whatever. But anyway, it won't be hard to find it. There are people who are throwing glitter and feathers and this, and everyone thinks that it was, you know, stripped in. And I virtually never strip anything in. You know, I've always wanted it to be just as it is. 
which isn't to say that I might not move a feather from one place to another or add a few this or that, but I really want it to be real. And, and everything is real, it actually happened. I'm not like making something up. And, and again, I'm not telling the dance, well, I mean, I, t I don't tell them what to do, but it's, I'm going to go on too long with this concept. But <laughs> the point is that it's unexpected for me. So what interests me is not to replicate something that I have in my mind or want to produce or whatever. I just want to see what comes from nowhere. And the dancers have that same point of view. They're thrilled, as I said before, not to have to do the choreography, they, they almost never get to express themselves independent of that. And so it's this wonderful dialogue. And then of course, looking at it as we go, be, because we can now, um, just, just makes it wonderful. And I can shoot millions of pictures. I mean, which is something I feel strongly about when I give workshops. You're gonna have to shut me up because this is gonna go on forever. <laughs> People. No, I, you, you know, the thing is, Lois, is that what you're talking about is everything that we've always talked about. We named this organization Potty Duff for a reason, and that's because of the interaction between the photographer and the dancer, and that, that it's something that, you know, we do together. You know, we don't just direct the dancers necessarily. You know, a lot of times we just give them, you know, like ideas. So... Mm -hmm. Um, so, you know, you know, what you're talking about is exactly what we're talking about, except for, of course, you all, you know, you have these, these amazing ideas that you're able to play out and your and, you know, and your way of photo photographing dancers that, you know, we're all going to, uh, we've all appreciated, you know, over the years that you've done that. So, um, and I want to make sure that if I'm in a group, I, you know, I don't, I want to bring that out in each photographer that's there, however, you're going to be doing it, you know, because there's a tension. I think the photographers come in and they, you know, just eager to get it. And, and you have to kind of step back and let it happen and whatever, you know, I don't want to go on too long with that. Um, yeah, so, yeah. And so my lighting is, is really simple. And I'm going to talk about that. And I'm going to talk about how I communicate with them and how I move things around. And, you know, because most people really don't, I think, expand their vision, so to speak. They see it, they like it, they shoot it. And then they often, and I, I noticed this from the, the last uh, competition you had, when we, we had that interaction with these wonderful photographers, uh, they didn't, as good as the pictures were, they didn't realize that uh, a foot was hidden or this was happening they were more just I got the picture as opposed to really entering the picture and seeing you know what might be missing or not missing or whatever or taking chances I, I don't know if people want to take chances or they just want to come out with a product and I never had a product in in mind so I never wanted that and and was lucky to work with dancers who were incredibly you know amazing <laughs> you know um yep. and not so much ballet i think you know pas de deux stresses more the ballet side and i was more the other side you know the um, contemporary side yeah contemporary but but maybe having less to do with choreography and more about the individual concepts or visions and the exploration of postmodern. yes Yes. which goes back to the 70s so which is when I started doing this so um I think I probably <laughs> said enough on that, on that or else I'll just keep repeating myself but um what else then should I uh well that that's good for now Lois we'll, we'll come yeah. back to you with, with uh, okay. some more things and um and you know and the thing is like like uh I I know Pada does like a, a ballet term but um um and, and when you look at our pictures, you see mostly ballet, but that's just because I guess, you know, we have more ballet dancers getting photographed than anything, you know, I, I think we're, we're really like uh, open to all kinds of dance and, uh, um, and it's, it's, it's actually kind of exciting when we see like totally new types of dance out there. So that's really fun. But ballet dancers also probably want to stretch themselves too. 
Yeah. Indeed Maybe they're they tired of the yeah. other. And exactly. sometimes I've worked for commercial clients with it. I have, you know, famous dancers, but I've given them all the other stuff and it's actually an advertisement for a product like a PZO or something. Yeah. But they like it. Especially if they're classical ballerinas, you know, because they're, 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 it's so rigid as to what they can and can't do within that. So, mm -hmm. okay, well, let me move around. Um, uh, next up, I, I'd like uh, Jonathan, you know, to talk a little about, you know, something new we're going to be offering at this conference. And uh, that's going to be uh, some aerial dance photography. So um, uh, we're going to have like uh, one of the studios set up for that. We're going to spend... Uh, like a Saturday morning, Jonathan's going to give like a beginner's class for it, and then more of an advanced class after that. And then we're going to have an open period where, um, you know, anyone can just go in there and photograph dancers. So Jonathan, go ahead and uh, talk a little bit about that, please. Hi, how you doing? Um, so I'm Jonathan Gibbons. My studio is in Sunrise, Florida. Um, for those of you that don't know, I was a performer first. I did 34 national tours. Uh, I was a dancer and a choreographer and stuff like that. Um, segued into uh, backstage work doing technical. Uh, toured with Cirque du Soleil. I ran a circus, uh, well, several circuses around the world. Lebanon, uh, Portugal, uh, uh, European tours, things like that. Um, so my business is we're just performer centric. So we do dance, but we also do circus contortionists, aerialists, um, fire spinners, you know, exotic acts, things like that, whip artists, um, any kind of performance we, we handle because um, that's kind of the world that I've been in. Um, so at Potato this year, I'll be teaching some volume uh, dance classes as well as the aerial stuff. Um, so I am the uh, safety consultant for American Circus Educators, uh, the American Youth Circus Organization. I'm, I am the rigging technology safety expert for them. Um, I am really big on safety, on being able to do this stuff correct. There's a lot of really rigid rules for, for rigging and for interacting with aerialists, um, not just in like the safety of them falling out of the air, but how they warm up, how they're training, how you, you work with them when you are posing an aerialist, um, you know, photographing an aerialist, the, the sort of the care and feeding of them, as I like to say. Um, so we'll be doing a beginner class on if you want to do aerial yourself, how you potentially could do it in your studio. Um, we'll, I'll have handouts of things. You'll be able to have um, terminology and a guidebook, a checklist to be able to go through of if you want to do aerial, I can do this and this and this. Um, how some definite things that you are not ever, ever allowed to do um, because you will know better because I will have told you. And so you can be smart and not do it. Um, and uh, then we'll do the advanced class where we work more on techniques of how to be able to capture specific things, um, ways to get the most out of your aerialist. Is aerialists are used to performing for live audiences. Hi, David. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's okay you're in a car it's all good <laughs> um so yeah aerialists are used to performing for live audiences for video capture things like that for doing still work it's a very different world um aerialists move generally speaking much faster than dancers um because there's no uh, friction or much less friction uh, keeping them in place so when they spin they spin really rapidly it's kind of similar to shooting ice skaters in that uh, in that regard for the way that they spin and move uh, in my studio here in florida we we have rigging points we fly people around in the air we're building a second facility in nashville where we're going to have even more capabilities and more ceiling height and width um, so i'm looking forward to, to all that fun stuff but um, I'm bringing a, a, a bunch of rigging toys so we can fly people around in the space. Um, we have a series of both kids up to adult performers, uh, people that have worked with Cirque du Soleil, with uh, the Set Blot, um, with uh, um, Quixotic, um, Celebrity Cruises, things like that. It's a, it's a good, good variety of folks that we're gonna have. And uh, it's all happening on Saturday. So we'll have the beginner class, the advanced class, and then some open shooting time. 
Um, I'm also loading in some theatrical lighting. So it'll be like a performance kind of a shooting system. We won't be using strobes, which is what I typically shoot with in my studio. Um, to be able to allow multiple people to shoot simultaneously, we're doing uh, the theatrical lighting. So we'll have a bunch of um, LED Lecos that we'll be able to use. Uh, and I'll be running the light board as well as doing the flying. So, and I'm sorry, my German Shepherd is freaking out right now. Um, yeah. So uh, that's uh, that's the aerial thing. It's it's a lot of fun. It's uh, definitely something to that I think is a good addition. Um, it's just there's a very specific set of parameters that you need to um, stay within to be able to do it safely. It's not just as simple as putting an eye bolt in the ceiling and hanging something from it. There's there's a lot of consideration that needs to to go along with that. And you know, again, safety, 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 safety for dancers, for aerialists, for whatever it is that you're shooting. Um, having a good knowledge base of what it is that you're getting yourself into to make sure you can do it well is key. So this is one little way that I get to help. Very cool. Well, thank you very much. I know that's going to be a, a kind of a very fun and exciting addition to our conference this year. So we're all looking forward to it. Okay, let's move over to, uh, to David. And uh, David, if you can unmute yourself now. And uh, you know, David, David Hoffman, also known as Shark Cookie, uh, is, uh, is also a returning speaker from our Phoenix conference. And, um, and uh, you know, so I, I, I know you're excited. We, you know, we just did a workshop together this summer in Chicago. And, and uh, so, and you were just in Austin, is that correct? Yeah, so I'm traveling most of the year. So I was just in Austin and uh, I checked out of some locations there. Um, so yeah, I mean, uh, I love Austin. I have some friends there, a lot of clients there. So I, I go there. I, it's it's the third time that I'm going to be there now, um, just in, in two years. Um, yeah, so um, I know you sent me an email a little bit about the topics that we should do, but remind me like maybe um, a little bit about, well, I can talk about my classes, but um, I think you had some specific things that you wanted me to talk about. Remind me, I'm just, I'm sorry, I'm in the car. I'm on, I checked no. out of my hotel, I'm on my way to a photo shoot, so. <laughs> but I no, had, I, totally, I, I, I totally get that. Uh, you know, I just wanted you to, you know, just briefly talk about, you know, like some of the classes that you're going to be doing. And then, yes. you know, I, you know, it's nice to talk about the experience that we had, you yes. know, at, in Phoenix and, you know, and, uh, and um, and then just uh, um, you know your excitement about Austin, you know. Awesome, yeah. Um, so, well, after I saw Jonathan's class, I think I'm gonna cancel mine and take his because I'm <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> um, so, no, I have um, I have a few things planned. Um, I think one of my actually most successful or more, most popular classes was um, in the first conference was about the studio lighting and how I do that. Um, because I have a very simple setup, but it works really effectively. And it's something that I worked out myself over the years that just works for me. And it also works for traveling a lot. And I think it works really well for a lot of people that don't have a huge studio and don't have like, you know, um, basically a whole rack of lights and modifiers and everything available. And if you look at my studio shots, a lot of people um, really like it, especially my clients really love the look and they specifically ask for that. So that is one class that I really want to kind of go into and talk about. Um, another thing, obviously, is social media. Um, as you guys know, I'm pretty big on social media. It's one of my major platforms to get clients, to get out there. Um, you know, the thing is this with, you know, it has this, this love hate, you know, in, in the community or in general, like people love it because, you know, you get seen, you can put your stuff out there, but they hate it if they don't get what they kind of feel like they should, you know, um, get out there. And I want to kind of break that down a little bit. Um, the thing with social media is also that, um, you know, some people have viral videos and I would say, I wouldn't say they get lucky, but you know, they have a hit and and that's how they got a lot of followers. I consistently use social media over the last 10 years and I'm pretty successful on, on several platforms. So, um, so I'm not just talking about accidentally getting something viral and getting it out. 
but the kind of like a strategy and the strategy that I've been using and like I, I my TikTok, for instance, I struggled a lot with, and now my TikTok following is bigger than my Instagram, which I had for many years. Um, so, um, and I talked to a lot of really big creators that are way bigger than I am. <laughs> and so we kind of brainstormed. So I have a lot of insight for that. I think the webinar that we did recently, um, I talked a bit, a little bit about that too. And then, um, and then I think one other really important thing is, so I travel a lot. <clears throat> I think most of my business is actually on the road. Nine years of the, uh, nine years, nine months of the year, I am on the road traveling. And what I do is I often don't really know the location. I just walk in and start shooting and that's how I do my sessions. And that is, um, and I can do that because, you know, obviously I've, doing, I've been doing it for a while, but also um, that I kind of developed um, a way to kind of use natural light really well. Um, and I think that is something that um, that I noticed a lot of people actually approach me and say, hey, you know, you're, you, can, can you just like do a workshop? Can I shadow you on a shoot? Or can we do like a mentoring, uh, like about the whole, how do you, how do you shoot? Like, you know, like the process when you go outside and shoot. And I think that is a big part that I, that I feel very, very strong and feel, feel very good about. And I know, I know there's a lot of people wanting to see that. So the photo walks that that I'm going to do outside, I think that's that's really one of the things where um, it's also less of a lecture. It is it is a learning experience, but you can come and shoot and actually get the same results that I'm, you know, doing. So it's not just like sitting there and uh, listening to me for an hour, which is kind of boring. It might be boring. <laughs> Right, right, you know, um, but um, so I, I really look forward for that. And and those are actually kind of my favorite things. I'm not the person to stand there and talk. Um, I like doing things and I, I, that's how I learned. Like I never went to college. I never um, had any formal training. Um, I learned doing, you know, and I, my, my background, if you don't know, I, I worked in the movie industry for many years, 10 years of that. I was an artist at DreamWorks Animation and worked with amazing other artists, like the world's best artists, you know, are there. And uh, so that's how I learned. And, and that's, I feel like I want to kind of, um, uh, kind of convert that to my teaching style. It's like, like learning by doing. Um, so it's a very hands-on approach. Okay. Well, sounds good. You know, I think it's, it, you know, one of the things that's really interesting and, and like when you're doing your photo walk, you know, because like a lot of times people really want to plan. And I think one of the best things is just being able to just walk up and look at a setting and say, wow, let's, let's do this. You know, uh, the light is going to look great going in this direction. The setting looks good. And then you start working with the dancer to decide, you know, what, what they're going to do in that spot. And I think that's, that's going to help a lot of people who, especially if they, you know, have that concern about like, you know, oh, I'm going to be shooting in a new spot today. And, you know, I don't know it very well. And, I, I think it's a it's a very good point and and you and I are kind of similar we don't try to plan it too much out and that doesn't mean that planning is something bad but um, the, the clients that I have and the way I work um, planning doesn't really always work you know and I, the other thing that I noticed if you plan something and it doesn't work out um, you can very quickly shoot yourself in the foot and like this doesn't work and then you're trying to hit a wall basically and so um like i had many sessions and i'm going to talk about it where things that i planned just didn't go out like work out at all you know and then i said all right this doesn't work how about i'm actually using what is fighting me on the set or the lighting situation and use that to make it a point and so i turned around some really bad situations into like very successful shoots and i think that's that's really the point um just keep an open mind, walk into something, you have an amazing, that's the other thing, you have an amazing artist with you, the dancer. Um, and I always say a good photo is a dialogue. It's like talking to the dancer and then they talk to you, they answer back and it's like, um, yeah, it's a dialogue. That's a good photo. Okay, well, let's, let's uh, go ahead and move along now. And um, I wanna talk a little bit about uh, uh, some classes I'm gonna be doing as well. I'm gonna be offering a class on dance poses and, um, and positions and leaps and, you know, trying to help people learn, you know, what they're called. I'll be doing that with our uh, creative 
directors, uh, Jessica and Alexa. Hopefully both of them will be joining me for that class. And, um, and then I'll be offering a lecture class because <laughs> we can't make a mess at the, at the resort, but I'll be offering a lecture class on, uh, on uh, color powder shoots and kind of like, like uh, talking about you know, how you can do those. Um, so I, I want to just for the moment, just take you over and let you guys have a quick glimpse of what the schedule is looking like. It's, uh, it's not you know, completely set yet, but, um, but you can, let's see, you can, does everybody see the, uh, the, the schedule here now? I don't see I do. I yep. see. Okay, perfect. It's kind of funny. I don't, I don't actually see anything. Yeah, you might zoom in a little bit. It's very small though. Yeah. I was trying to figure out how to do that earlier. Oh, here it is. Okay. 200%. There we go. Okay. So here it is here. And so this is Thursday. We're going to be doing the offsite excursion to McKinney Falls State Park. Um, I think we're going to start with some portfolio reviews with Lois. Lois is going to be very excited about that. We have some special reviews with her. Uh, and then some a Blue Hour Light Painting with Eric Parry and Kim Henry. And then the welcome reception where we'll be announcing the winners of uh, the photo competition. We're pretty excited to be doing that. We'll have a display of all the, you know, the top 15 photos there. Um, on Friday morning, um, and again, these times may be adjusted a little bit, you know, but we're going to be starting off at 8.30 a.m. And then Lois will be giving her keynote uh, on the wonder hiding in a split second. You know, that's going to be pretty interesting. Um, then we're going to have a speaker panel with Lois, Andrew Eccles, Judy Host, Daniel Woods, Vicki Sloviter, and Lewis Palms. Um, um, we're going to be uh, having a little part on dancer safety and etiquette. We're going to have a surprise guest talking to us for about 20 minutes. <laughs> and, um, and then Lois is going to give her first class to the entire group, which I think is really cool. A lot of people you know, are, are obviously very interested in having a class from Lois. And from there on out, everybody has to choose, you know, between one of five classes that are happening at any given time. And so it's, it's always a challenge. And so this way, everybody gets to see Lois and her class, you know, and she'll be uh, talking about outside the constraints of choreography, a lot about just like what she was talking about a little bit earlier. Um, then we're going to have like a lunch right there. And from 1 to 4.30, we're going to be focusing on the trade show and the portfolio review. So there won't be any dancer checkouts, uh, you know, nothing going on. This will simply be a time for us to network with each other and more impo importantly, get into the trade show and uh, talk to our exhibitors, you know, about what they have to offer. Um, we'll be offering two classes on Friday evening. Um, and you can kind of see them here, Eric Parry and Kim Henry will be doing a class on studio light painting in a studio setup. And uh, we're very excited to have Ashkan Roy uh, joining us to talk about like uh, working with light and fabric. So that's gonna be very interesting. Um, we have Vicky had doing a class. Jonathan will be doing a class on volume dance schools. Uh, Alexis Quaresma will be back, you know, talking about his work with dancers. And then that'll be when uh, I'll be doing that class with uh, Alexa and Jessica on dance positions and terminology. Um, and, uh, and Oliver Indahl will be doing a photo walk. And then on Friday night, you'll see Rose Coleman. Uh, she'll be doing a studio lighting class for beginners. Um, Joe McNally will be doing a class. Um, our special guest will be doing a class. Andrew Eccles will be doing a class. And Megan Scott Sockle, they're going to be, uh, they do a lot of uh, uh, volume work. And so they're going to be coming in here and talking about, you know, how to organize and run a successful photo day. Um, and um, and uh, so they'll be doing that. Uh, and then Judy Host will be talking about the beauty and art of ballet pho photography. Um, we're also planning to possibly do an excursion into Austin. So for like a nighttime shoot, which will, I think will be really interesting. Um, 
On Saturday, we start off very early, eight o'clock in the morning. Um, Lois Greenfield, you'll be up at 6.30 in the morning, okay? Does that work for you? No problem. <laughs> no, I'm joking. Eastern Standard Time? <laughs> <laughs> exactly, I'm totally joking. Pacific we Standard Time? <laughs> <laughs> exactly, there you go. <laughs> um, you know, Jonathan will be starting his classes on aerial photography. Judy will be doing a class. I'm kind of going through these pretty quickly. They're not locked in yet, but you know, you can kind of see all the things that are happening. Oliver doing a class, we'll have a round table discussion, you know, about building relationships with dance studios and, you know, how, how to grow your business with that. Andrew Eccles will be doing a, uh, a class as well. Um, and then at the next session, each of the classes are an hour and 15 minutes. And um, Jonathan will be doing a class on uh, Ariel again. That'll be the advanced class. Uh, Bill Konzierski will be uh, doing a class as well. Um, you know, talking about, you know, how he does his uh, like Renaissance shots. It's really cool. Lois will be up to bat talking about the importance of gesture and working, communicating with dancers on the set. And Rose Coleman will be doing a class on volume photography and Drew Forsyth will be there to talk about commercial dance campaigns. Um, and I think we'll be doing another class with our special guest again. And then we have classes going from 11.15 to 12.30. Jonathan will be leading the open aerials. Alexis Cuerzma will be doing a class. Vicky Sloviter. Ashkan will be doing another class, uh, another round table, possibly on editing. Um, the, the round tables are still kind of up in the air. We haven't like locked those in yet. Um, and then that's when I'll be doing my class on color powder. Uh, Joe McNally will be there. I think he's going to be doing a photo walk. Um, and so will David Hawkman. Sometimes we'll have a couple of different photo walks going at the same time. Um, the trade show will be going from 1 to 3 p.m. And the lunch is like 1230 to 130. So, you know, I, I don't want to like go through all the classes. It'll just be kind of boring, but, you know, I just wanted to kind of give you guys a chance to like, like see these right here and uh, get a sense of like, like what it's like. Um, so there it is there. Now, let me ask you guys a question. Uh, okay, do you guys see um, the picture of this tree here now? Does that show up? Or are you guys still seeing the classes? I see a tree. Okay, very cool. So that way it's popping right up. So on our excursion on Friday, we're gonna be going over to McKinney Falls State Park. And one of the really cool things about it are, are, are these rocks here, you know, that you can be playing with, with dancers. Um, you have trees coming right out of the rocks. I, I asked Beth to go up to the top because I thought, wow, this would be really cool for like a silhouette shot. This is like a, uh, late morning, mid afternoon shot. So it's not exactly like what it would look like uh, during the golden hour when, when we'll be doing the shoot. Um, we'll be at the lower falls, you know, for this shoot here. Uh, this is actually some of the upper falls shots, but um, um, that's what we're going to be doing on that day. And then I want to take you over. These are some shots that uh, I took with some dancers, you know, on location. This is a river that's just right outside the resort. Um, you know, this is right inside the resort, basically right outside the rooms. They, they have these like little gardens in there. And, uh, and then, you know, like some fences here. Uh, so I'm kind of like just walking around the resort right now, you know, getting these pictures here. This is some steps, you know, going up. It's just within like literally a minute of where we're having our classrooms or where you, you know you can see all these shots and and they're so different you know like from the river to you know over here is you can kind of see the th this is where uh some of the golf courses in the background now um now i'm up actually at a hole at the golf course and they have these really cool waterfalls you know i'm hoping that we're going to get access to these spots here you know this is another spot um there it's actually edited now <laughs> um where you can kind of get this overlook of the valley um so these are all like 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 some really cool places you know again this is like the entrance so 
when you come up to this entrance, you know you have arrived. Um, these are again, you know, on the golf course. Um, golf course shots, the waterfalls that you had seen earlier. So I just wanted to kind of share those with you a little bit, just so you can kind of get a sense of, of what, you know, the location looks like. So now we're back on. And the next thing I want to do, uh, I'm looking over at some questions. Phil Livingston is on there. Very good. And he's talking about Precision Camera in Austin will be, you know, offering discounted rentals, you know, the registrants. Um, we're actually going to be getting that out to everyone so you can, you know, get your rentals in place and locked in um, well beforehand. Um, I love it. Jeff Tisdale says best camera store in Texas. Of course they are. <laughs> um james you're going to be in that class good love to see it um so now i'm going to bring up for a moment uh maria she is uh she is where i've lost her there she is okay i'm going to promote her to a panelist and let's see if she shows up I'm just giving her a minute and there she is. Maria, if you can turn on your audio and your video. I think we should be able to hear you now. No, nope, we still have, maybe she's she's not paying attention right now. So we'll see if she comes back on in just a moment. Nope, there she is. Okay. Right. And I, I asked Maria to jump on just to talk a little bit about Phoenix for those of you who uh, were not at our um, at our first conference. So Maria, tell us about your experience. Uh, is there anything in particular you want me to say? No, I, I just want to hear, you know, like, like what your experience was, you know, I mean, to, to me, it's like, it's like when you come to our conference and you, and a lot of people talk about, it, they had no idea what to expect mm -hmm. and they had no idea that not only were they going to get these great classes, but they were going to like create all these cool friendships and, yeah. and, and it's a community and networking that really comes out. So, yeah. So, um, so Pas de Deux was actually my very first conference I'd ever attended. I had never gone to any photography conference ever. Um, so when I found out about this conference, um, you know, as I said, it was my very first photography conference. And I obviously had no idea what to expect. It was my first time leaving my children. Um, and so that was also a big deal for me. Uh, even though they were, you know, six and seven at the time. Um, so that was huge. Um, and uh, I uh, stayed with several different people in my room. I had several roommates. Um, I think we had like, I don't know, five or six people in our room. We had like two people per bed and two people on the couch, like, you know, a mom and a daughter on the couch at the answer. And so that was a, um, a fun experience. You know, I was always a fan of having college roommates, uh, the more of a merrier to make it cheaper. Uh, so my husband thought that was really odd that I was staying with so many people. I had no idea who they were. I just met them in the Facebook group and I kind of felt like I had a relationship with them. So we were all like moms anyways. And so we were like, yeah, let's stay together. That's fun. <laughs> we were in a Facebook group chat. And so, you know, we stayed up late and got up early and, you know, uh, had a uh, you know some Starbucks and Mountain Dew you know Amazon to our room and uh, <laughs> we got in early uh, to the conference and uh, you know Bill and uh, Derek and a couple of us had you know planned to have a photo um, some dancers from Arizona State uh, and uh, I think Drew and all of us had a big uh, you know thing planned like the day before the conference started and. So, you know, it kind of just felt like I already knew everybody, even though I had never met any of these people before. We already had this big relationship. Uh, I felt like I was just meeting a bunch of, bunch of friends. Um, so that was really fun. I'm obviously an extrovert. So, um, you know, it was really a fun experience. Um, and there were people I had already known from Instagram who had followed me and they were like, oh, I, oh my gosh, you're 12, nine dance. Oh, I'm so excited to meet you. And, you know, and I was like, Oh my, really me? You want to meet me? <laughs> like, you know, so that was really cool. Um, and then I felt like such a fan girl when I when I saw David. I was like, oh, is that is that your cookie? Oh my gosh, it's shark cookie. <laughs> and like, you know, I saw him walking around, like checking light and you know, with a dancer. And 
I felt like such a such a like idiot when I first met him <laughs> so but then I just come to find out he was just like a normal guy and same thing with like um Valley Zeta and you know I took the classes and I learned so much and uh just walked away feel coming back with like more confident you know in my my photography skills and uh I, I remember taking Jonathan's class as well um you know I just I learned so many things and I came away with so many more friendships and people that I literally still talk to, you know, on a regular basis, um, you know, in a Facebook group chat, or I know that I can reach out to Bill or Derek if I have lighting questions, or I can reach out to David if I have a question. And I just feel like these guys are my friends now. Um, you know, so it's really cool. And I'm, I'm so looking forward to the next conference and, uh, you know, just further expanding my knowledge. Um, so it was a great experience. Um, and I really, I'm just counting down the days to February. <laughs> so, um, you know, so sad that we had to miss last year. Um, I really encourage everybody to, you know, get in a group, uh, get in the Facebook group if you're not already in it and make those relationships. And if you're not weirded out by staying with uh, so-called strangers, uh, definitely get a roommate and you know, stay up late, get up early, uh, drink some coffee <laughs> and don't miss out anything and definitely stay in the resort because if you're staying off site, you're gonna miss something, so. Okay, well, thank you very much. That's uh, no problem. Yeah, that's exactly what I was kind of hoping to hear from you. Yeah. Um, so I, I, you know, she did bring up, you know, one thing, and that that's that, you know, like we we often have uh, uh, things happening before the conference, and we are kind of like planning something again on the Wednesday before, you know, there may be even things happening on Tuesday, because I know some people are coming as early as Monday, um, but uh, like like I do know that something will be happening on Wednesday. So if somebody, you know, if if you are able to come in early, I highly recommend it. If you come in on Thursday, the you know, that first excursion, you know, we leave on the bus around 3.30 p.m. So, um, so that, you know, you, you want to be there for that. If you plan to join the excursion, if not, you know, we'll have photo walks happening at 4.30 there on the resort. And, uh, you know, and then Eric Pares, you know, starting at uh, uh, around 6.30 or 7 or something like that. And, and then, of course, the welcome reception. The welcome reception is going to be a lot of fun. It's going to be a social event. Um, we're going to have another like social event on Saturday night, which I think is going to be a lot of fun because you'll have had like a couple of days to get to know, you know, er, you know, a few people. So, you know, it'll be fun to just uh, see everybody. No, Lynn, no sign up for the bus just yet. We're, we're finalizing things right now and we're getting ready to get that going. Um, for that excursion, just so everybody is aware, the way that it works is, is, uh, we're going to have like admissions fees to the park and and the cost for the bus. So if you want to do uh, the excursion, you know, with the bus and, you know, all you do is we just we just have you, you know, like like it just you just cover the cost of it. That's it. So um, so that's it. I just want to go back now and just uh, get some, you know, get some final thoughts from Lois and from Jonathan and David. Um, you know, now that they've kind of sat through and, and you know, listened to everything um, and just get some final thoughts, you know, anything that uh, that you guys can suggest for everyone. Uh, Lois, you've been, you know, giving classes, you know, you know, I, I don't know, you know, if you've ever done like conferences or anything, but I know that you've done classes and you've done your own workshops. Um, so anything that you want to say for people to prepare for this? Actually, I don't really think they have to prepare. Sometimes like, there's an expression called beginner's mind. Like if you come in with too many preconceptions, it limits the thing. So hopefully everyone will expand and 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 learn new and, and see things slightly differently. <clears throat> I'm a little bit um, concerned about the portfolio reviews in that when I give them, they're longer and longer. And um, and I think that's important. But I just want to say for the people I know there, it's a, a shorter time slot but they should come with the pictures they like the best from a, a given shoot, as well as the pictures they didn't think worked. I mean, not millions and millions of pictures, but it's nice to see the um, trajectory of <clears throat> where they started, where they ended. And so I would like to spend a little more time 
delving into the pictures they didn't like or did like or wish they had done or whatever and make suggestions and um, give them thoughts or whatever and, and help really analyze because I find we're also happy taking these pictures and we like and we can't make decisions or whatever. And I think it is important to kind of focus in on which is the picture, I mean, or many pictures and not just say, hey, I got a picture, it's great, the light's good, her, her leg is up or whatever, <clears throat> and like be a little more analytical or cri critical, not critical in a bad way, but just not saying, hey, this looks great, I love the smile, and then find that the foot's wrong or her, whatever, you know. Yeah, so I, I think the I'm key- I'm more picky thing, on that. I, I think the key thing that you just said right there is, you know, don't just bring pictures to try and impress us, you know, bring pictures that, you know, that, that represents something that you struggled with, you know, so we can help you, you know, like overcome that. Um, Elise is asking, do you sign up for the portfolio review? And, and the answer is yes, Elise. When, once you've registered, uh, you can go to uh, our, uh, our app on guidebook. You go to guidebook, download that application, and then search for Padida Photo. And in there, you can actually sign up for portfolios. Okay, thank you very much, Lois. Jonathan, what are your thoughts? Um, one of the big differences with Pata de versus the other photography conferences that I've been to, um, in my experience, when I went to like imaging or SPAC or you know any of those kinds of things, the speakers were like high and lofty above us all, and you know wouldn't deign to speak to you mere people unless you're in a class. Um, I know myself, David, uh, you know, Ron can be touching sometimes. <laughs> um, if you see us around, you are more than welcome to come up and talk to us and ask questions. You know, we're, uh, we're, we're there to, to help. You know, we, we are approachable. We are just like you guys. Um, you know, so don't worry, like, you know, I don't want to interrupt. I want to do that. I, I've gotten emails from people that had been to the conference and said, oh, I saw you. I was sitting next to you in the room and I didn't want to bother you because, you know, you seem like you were doing something or whatever, like, feel free, go ahead and, and reach out and talk to us. Um, you know, this is, uh, we are always learning ourselves. Uh, and often I learn things from people that I talk to, because um, everybody knows more than me about something. Uh, so I'm always open to learning from those people around me. So, you know, I, I appreciate it myself, because I get to figure things out from everybody else as well. Um, so, you know, it's a, it's a great community in this group and it's, it's one of the things that I really enjoy about it. And one of the big reasons why I came back for a second time, um, that, uh, it, it is such a great family vibe that we got going on here. So, you know, treat it that way. Cool. Well, that's awesome, Jonathan. We're so excited to have you back. And David, any yeah, final thoughts? Um I, I want to just echo what, what Jonathan said. It's really a community. I, I feel the same way about, um, you guys can hear me, right? I unmuted? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking here. Uh, yeah, this was what Jonathan said. Like he's, uh, like it is a community. And I, 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 what Maria said, you know, like, oh my God, there's shark cookie, you know, like I'm just a guy, you know? <laughs> just, and and that's my point coming to the conference. Like I'm, I'm available 24 seven. Well, mine is when I sleep, but, um, so no, like if you see me just, you know, ask like that is my point to just, you know, not be busy, not do anything else. That's, I'm just there for everybody. And, um, um, and I, I think really what, what, you know, what, what John said, like everybody is open and there for, for you guys to come, you know? Um, and so we're, we're, um, I'm just super happy. I'm, I'm also excited to meet some of the other people like Lois I've never meet, met, so I'm excited, but um, I know that Ron is keeping me busy, so <laughs> I'm not sure if I'll have a chance. <laughs> um, I don't know. Like I, I'm, I'm excited to come. Just like you know, if 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 I wasn't a speaker, I would come anyways, because it's just like I mean, it's just so much fun. Um, and then the other thing is that I think is a really great opportunity is the amount of amazing dancers, like and everything, like from every level, every style you have access to that, which is just um, just amazing. Like you're gonna walk home with uh, um, a, a pile of amazing photos and a variety of, of talent that you have captured. So I think that is a really, really amazing opportunity. And I don't think that exists anywhere else to be, to be frank. So yeah, I'm super excited. Yeah, I, I, you know, 
obviously not everyone some of you know who our dancers are because you know um you, you know because some of them know some of you know some of the dancers but uh um, man, I, I, you know, I, I got to see like the dancers who put in this year and it's just amazing. There are some people who didn't make the cut and it's like, wow, it's, it's unbelievable, you know, the, the talent that we have this year. So I'm, I'm, I'm really excited about that. All right. Well, thank you guys very much for joining us for this. I just wanted to like, uh, get some information out there, everybody. And, um, and I, you know, uh, generate some excitement about the uh, about the conference. For those of you who are watching today, please feel free to help get the word out. You know, share the share the link to our website um, uh, with with uh, your your uh, Facebook groups. You know, in each of the towns wherever you are. Um, and aside from that, um, I'm sure we'll be in touch again. Like. Uh, Probably in another month, we'll do something on the conference. Uh, uh, those of you who are thinking about doing the photo competition, that is open now, and you can actually start submitting your entries for that. And otherwise, I can't wait to see everybody in February. It's going to be so much fun. I will talk to you guys soon. Thanks again for everybody for being a part of this today. Bye. Bye-bye.